folks, the Filipino be here, and this might surprise you. But in the Philippines, alcohol really does grow on trees. And today, I'm going to take you high up in the mountains of Valencia and show you how we harvest one of our most popular homemade alcoholic drinks called tuba. It's made from coconut trees and it's very popular in the Visayas and Mindanao. If you've ever been to the Philippines, someone probably handed you a glass of tuba. The collection process is not for the faint-hearted. So if you saw me do this a few years ago, or if you have a fear of heights, this might not be the video for you. Now let's head to the mountains and find a tree to harvest and see just how much alcohol we can get out of it. Well guys, to get to our destination, I have to take this side of the mountain, but you have to be really careful. It's treacherous and it's actually wet and rocky. It's raining at the moment and there's no clear pathway in this section. So this is gonna be fun. Oops. Oh, wildflowers! Ah. It's gorgeous! And there's plenty of them out here. I don't know the name. And they don't smell like anything. But they sure are very, very pretty. There's orange, there's purple, and there's this white flower. Well, I'll name it white flower. Come check this out. This is what we call the makahiya plant. It's the shy plant because when you touch it, it closes up. Ta-da! <laughs> I think there's one more here. Aww. It's like Filipinas. I'm so shy. This is fun. It's like a piano. <laughs> but you have to be careful, guys, because it's got um, thorns and it's kind of prickly, really. Yeah. Makahiya. All right, let's continue. Look, guys, look what I found. This is the mother of chocolates. This is a cacao tree and it can grow wild here in the Philippines. And you guys have your Swiss Miss, we have our chocolate. So what we do is we dry the seeds and we grind them and we can make it into a hot cocoa and we add sugar in it because we love it sweet. And also we can use it uh, for baking. We also use it for making our own version of dark chocolate and um, other stuff as well. You can even use it as, you know, facial scrub. So. Yeah, I'm now I'm getting hungry, so let's continue. I can hear water. Let's take a look. Oh wow. This view is breathtaking, guys. Oh, come check this out. Look! There's a river running through the valley. Oh, I wish I could just dive in the water. Even though it's quite rainy up here, I still feel kind of hot. Oh, well, we're close to the coconut tree, so it's just another turn. So, let's keep going. Oh, look, Lucy. I used to eat them when I was a kid. I'm not sure what the name of this plant is, but it's got purple flowers. Aren't they pretty? You know? Let me see if I can get some berries here. Our version of wild mulberry bush. Okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's got ants. <laughs> it's like black currant. Hmm. So sweet. And it makes your tongue purple. <laughs> All right. Carry on. 
All right, folks, so we finally reached the coconut tree that is used for tuba production. And as you can see, there are plenty of coconut trees here, but most of them are only used for copra, for the coconut oil production. And this one behind me is for tuba production. Anyway, to harvest the tuba, unfortunately, I have to climb up all the way to the top because it's coming from the bud from up there. I know, I know, I... I promised two years ago that I wouldn't be climbing coconut trees again, but at least this tree behind me is not as tall as the one I climbed in Dare the P2. And uh, I've got my gear here. I've got the coconut tube. This is gonna be the container for the tuba. And I've got my scythe because I have to cut the bud so that it keeps producing sap. And by the way, guys, the, the people who are using this coconut tree, um, to harvest the tuba. They use this, these notches, so that's easier to climb up and down. And so guys, this tree is sitting on the side of a mountain. It's not as tall, but I think if I fall, I might survive, so wish me luck. All right, so I've got my gear here, the, um, the GoPro, so I can give you the bird's eye view of the actual harvesting from the top. So let's do this. Hi, Luz. Wish me luck, guys. Ah. Whoa, I'm on top of the world, literally. This is not an easy job. Whoa, this is extreme fear factor. Okay, let's see. Oh, they're bees. Hello, little bee. Please don't bite me. Oh no! Bees! I don't wanna get stung. How would I do this? Okay. So this is the bud, guys. This is what I'm talking about, the bud. And this is the tuba. Okay, there's the tuba. Okay, I got it all. Alrighty, I got that one. Okay, so I'll just put this one for now. I'll just put this one there. We have to cut a tiny bit of the bud. Let me just get my scythe. I have to be careful guys because this is really sharp. Just a bit of it. Just have to cut teeny tiny of it. Yeah, just tiny so that it keeps on producing the sap. There you go. Okay, that should be done. That should be all right. Okay, all righty. Okay, let's put this one. All right, so we'll put that one. See you guys, it's dripping sap already. So we put that one back. There, and then we'll tie it tight later on. Okay. On to the next. It's over here. It's wedged. Yay! We got the second! Woo! 
Here's the tuba, guys. Okay. Let me just pour this in. Okay. All right. And let's see if I can go down now because this is really heavy. It's already full actually. Hang on guys. <laughs> this is not fun. Hi. Okay, let's see. That was intense. Uh, I don't think I need mountain climbing. Well, guys, I survived. And that's how you harvest tuba. So this is the freshly harvested tuba from this tree. And I'm gonna transfer it here so you guys can see it. So as it is, guys, you can drink this tuba. Um, and it's got eight proof already. Imagine it's just freshly harvested and you can drink it as it is and currently it's not fermented uh, It's milky white in color, but if you ferment it for like half a year to a year actually up to five years it can get to um, 25 proof or much stronger and some people use uh, the mangrove bark or what we call in Leyte barok, but here in Negros they call it tungog. Oh no! And it becomes reddish in color and it actually um, helps the fermentation process. Some people in Luzon they distill uh, their tuba, which they call lambanog, that's their version of it, but it's around 80 proof. It's much stronger and I don't I don't suggest you guys try it because it's it's not really I don't know, it's it's a health hazard. Someone died from it um, a few years ago. So yeah, this one is sweet and it's um, it smells fruity. And I'm amazed that even though it's freshly harvested, you might get drunk if you drink a lot of it, considering it's eight proof already. So guys, today I'm going to introduce you to the guy who owns the tree and see if he approves our tuba. Alright folks, so this is the man of the hour. This is the professional coconut pilot. He owns the coconut tree. So this is Tatay. Tatay, thank you so much for letting me, you know, harvest your tuba for today. Salamat nga, Gipa. Saka ko ni mo sa imong lubi. Okay, kayo wala sa payan. Okay, he said you're welcome. So this is the tuba. Approve, approve na nitay. Mm. Approve, approve. Okay, so I passed. Yay! A plus, B minus, A minus, one hundred percent. Ang ang akong grade. Ang sa grado. Ah, one hundred. Ah, one hundred. Hahaha, one hundred. One hundred. Nakasalpong man. <laughs> Nakasalpong bisag nagkalisod. <laughs> okay, I got a hundred from Tatay. Anyway, Tatay, how long have you been living here? Because your house is quite out in the boonies. It's really not easy to find mga pila nakakatuig diri ga puyo ikaw gi imong family mga ana 30 na kay dito mas malaon na nya ilaha man ni yuta ni mga 30 na gikaspag ko ana mo diri 30 katuig na oh. 30 years he lived here for 30 years so imong family your family also uh, lives here imong pamilya tay tanan mo din he mm. 
Oh, okay. okay. So, Tatay, how many coconut trees um, do you climb every day? Pilain mo hang sanggutan. Kuan na ni? Pilain na kabuok? Lima ra ni kay para ra ni pambalun mga batag estudyante ba? Ah, okay. So, he's got five um, five trees uh, that are producing tuba. So, Tatay, um, unsa man nanimo ang tuba? Um, what do you do with your tuba? Do you sell it? Kanang naakay pa kuanan dito, nakay datahan ato? Mm, naa. Naa, nara dire. Eh, hato da dito sa tindahan. Eh, hato sa tindahan. Sila na pimaghalin. Ah, sila na maghalin. Okay, so tatay's got um, a regular customer and he just drops the tuba. And how much is it for, tatay, per gallon? Pila imong baligya? 60 ra ko. Ah, dito na, 70 ang nagbaligya. Ah, okay, so mga 80 na, bali 80. Mm. Okay, so it's 80 pesos per gallon. Um, is it, regardless if it's fermented, if it's coconut vinegar or if it's um, a little fermented so this is 80 pesos mm, that smells so good so anyway tatay thank you so much Salamat. before we end before we end we should cheers <laughs> anyway thank you tatay and okay. have a good life for all of us because this is good for the health probiotics there's plenty cheers tatay thank you folks see you again All right, folks, so on our way home, we saw a tuba seller at the side of the road. So come check this out. So aside from tuba, they're selling suka, vinegar, and some food stuff. So this is the tuba, what? This is the tuba that they're selling. It's quite reddish. And this is freshly harvested. The same uh, tuba that we just uh, harvested earlier. And the reason why it's red, it's because they used tungog or barok. That's what we call it in Leyte. And it helps um, it helps the fermentation of the tuba. But this one's unfermented. And they're selling it for... Pilagan ini? How much yari per gallon, Tatay? Ochinta. Okay, so they're selling it for 80 pesos, which is a dollar fifty. A bang for your buck. Anyway, aside from that, folks, they're selling cucumber. I know this is quite unusual because it's yellow with a touch of brown. And... Also, they're selling the, the vinegar with chilies. Anyway, pila ka galon inyo hang ma sell sa usa ka adlaw tatay? Mga unom, unom ka galon. Okay, so they're selling 6 gallons a day of tuba and usually uh, we, they set up early in the morning. So tatay, how about if it's a child that buys tuba? What if kung bata ang mo palitay mo sell ra Japan mo? Okay, so I just asked that I, what if it's a child that, you know, buys the tuba? And they said, yeah, there's, they still sell it to them because pretty much everyone knows everybody here. So they know that it's not the kid who's drinking the tuba, it's the parents. And FYI, guys, you don't need a license or a permit to sell tuba. So, yeah, there's not a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to homemade alcoholic drinks here can sell some moonshine or lambanog the version in Luzon anyway hope you guys sell a lot of tuba today and thank you so much and for you folks out there bye for now just one last thing before you go if you think about it I'm kind of like your bartender listening to your comments and questions giving you advice when I can and brewing up some intoxicating content for your enjoyment the only thing I ask in return is a small tip in the form of a thumbs up on this video, subscribing to my channel, sharing this video with friends, and hitting the notification bell so you know when your next round has been poured. I promise, it'll only take 10 seconds to do, and your tip will make my day. You wouldn't want to shaft your bartender, would you? And for last call, why not enjoy some of my other videos too? See you real soon!